is an artist who explores the spatial politics of history, language, community, food, and cultural translation through art. In his new book titled White Riot, he chronicles the riots of 1907 that targeted Chinese and Japanese Canadian communities in Vancouver and explores the prevalent anti-Asian sentiment of the time with the help of striking historical photographs. Welcome to the show, Henry Tsang. <laughs> Henry, it's so good to have you here. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, what was happening in Vancouver in, in 1907? Well, if I can back it up a little bit. Absolutely. In just before 1907, uh, if we go back to when British Columbia joined uh, Canada and Confederation, one of the very first acts uh, that the new province passed was the Voters Act. And that was specifically targeting Chinese and indigenous people from ever being able to vote again. So, and very quickly they passed a, a Chinese head tax in British Columbia. A lot of people don't know that it wasn't just the federal head tax. British Columbia uh, started one before the feds did. And by 1903, it went up to $500, which is an awful lot of money at that time. They also passed uh, other voters act to keep the Japanese from voting when more Japanese came. And when South Asians came, also another voters act. By, by 1900, I actually did a little count there were uh, 88 acts passed by just the province to restrict Chinese, indigenous, South Asian um, uh, people. So it's pretty phenomenal. In 1907, Asiatic Exclusion League was started as a local chapter in Vancouver, something that started up in San Francisco a few years earlier. Uh, this is decades of anti-Asian violence along the West Coast. So they organized their first parade and demonstration in Vancouver uh, the weekend after Labor Day, and that's when the riots broke out. Hmm. Um, so you are an artist and you tell your stories uh, through different art forms. So White Riot uh, was first a 360 degree video walking tour, which is already astounding. Now you've turned this into a book. So how do you decide which art form to use based on the story you're trying to tell? Well, um, I've used a lot of different uh, mediums, photography, video, interactive, new media, public art, language, food, a lot of different uh, formats. But uh, this was my first attempt at making something that was uh, 360 video, also a walking tour. Uh, and, and so I was really excited. I've been curious about this technology for a long time. I've been curious about a lot of different technologies, but until I have an idea that well, I can utilize it, uh, it just kind of sits there uh, as, as some like, you know, candy in the candy store that I can't have. <laughs> and, and so, uh, yeah, this 360 uh, riotwalk.ca, anyone can access it on the internet. It invites people to, if you're in Vancouver, to go on a self-guided tour. We also offer public guided tours. But for people who are you know, outside of Vancouver, you can just check it out on your computer. You, can, you don't get the same interactivity as on a mobile device on site. If you tap the little green button on the bottom, the gyroscope kicks into play for your iPad or your, your mobile device, whatever. And it move, the image moves with your body. So it places you physically, if you're there, on the same ground where the rioters walked as they went into Chinatown to attack the Chinese and then to the, uh, attack the Japanese on Powell Street. The battle lasted for two days. I mean, it's, it's by far the longest race riot in Canada. And um, yeah, it gives you a historical context, but also brings into uh, mind of what, what some of the issues that carry over into the present today yeah. that we face. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, it offers an internet, uh, White Riot offers an intersectional approach to this moment in history for racialized communities. And then you use striking photographs that are juxtaposed with what the city looked like, to, what the city looks like today. So like, what does history have, the relevance of that in understanding our current socio-political environment? Well, um, hopefully through this project, uh, uh, with these historic photographs that have all been colorized and placed into contemporary imagery of the built urban landscape, you, you get a sense of uh, what's, what's happened in the past and, um, and uh, how it affects our present. Because things that, um, the way things are today uh, came about as a result of everything that's happened before. Every single particular place anyone lives in, certain things happen to make it the way it is. And if we're going to have any 
influence on how things can be in the future, we got to understand not just today, but the past, because we have, we have that kind of a capability of making the world a better place for our children or worse. And things can go backwards quickly. We've seen that in so many situations around the world and locally as well. Mm -hmm. um, now, with COVID-19, we, we saw a very sharp rise in anti-Asian racism over those, uh, over those couple of years. Could you talk to us about how it impacted the community, you know, here within Canada? Yeah, so prior to COVID, um, there's, there was a buildup of anti-mainland Chinese sentiment, right? A demonization and fear-mongering, and in some cases, you know, for good reason. Uh, so, but the anti-Asian sentiment and anti-Muslim sentiment and anti-Indigenous and anti-Black and et cetera uh, has been part of society for so long. And so when the anti-Asian uh, violence uh, uh, targeting the vulnerable people, it tends to be always vulnerable people, people with less power. So in this case, uh, elderly folks and, and women by themselves who might not be expected to fight back. Well, uh, this was just a return to something that already was present in society since the founding of Canada, because the founding of Canada was based on a, the idea of a white supremacist uh, idea, right? What have, what have you learned through this project personally? Well, it's uh, kind of sad, but I didn't know about this uh, event until my late 20s. I wasn't taught about it in school. I didn't learn about the Indian Act. I didn't learn about the Continuous Journey Act and the Komagatamaru or the internment of the Japanese Canadians in 1942. All these things were very specific and local to the place I lived in. And uh, I, I think it's my responsibility. I think it's our shared responsibility yeah. to know what's happened to everyone who's, as many people as we can understand, who live with us and next to us um, wherever we are. So if anything, it's, uh, it's um, yeah, it's participating in our society. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Henry. You're, it's, it's such a pleasure having you here. Henry right now is on a nationwide tour for his book, White Riot. The Toronto book launch is later today at the New College Ivy Library. And good news for the audience, you are all going home with a copy of the book. Thanks for watching. We've got lots more discussion and debates on everything from food and fashion to pop culture and current events. Don't forget to click like and subscribe.